Hello, Milwaukee! Woo. Can you all hear us out there in the back? All right. My name is Graham, and I am feeling Graham-powered to be here with you. And my name is Ashcon, and I am Ash Confident. You're going to come out of this seminar feeling like winners. <sighs> Buy a show. <laughs> no, sorry. That's because I, got, I didn't know where the clicker was. We're great presenters. But uh, we are here to talk to you today about Success. Success. By a show of hands, how many people here want to succeed? <laughs> Just what I thought. Now, and here's, a, here's another one for you. Take a second. How many of you here want to be successful? Uh huh. Okay. Excellent. And how many of you feel like no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, you're stuck, successful. <laughs> yeah, that's OK. There's no shame. That's why we're here. And how many of you would like to feel stuck, less full? <laughs> OK, that's what I thought. Say it with us now, everybody. I'm very, very excited, excited to, to change, change my, my stuckfulness to successfulness. To and to come, come out, out of this, this seminar, seminar being stuck, stuck less full. full. Okay, well, yeah, keep going. Let's, no, let's we can do, do better than that, people. Than let's do this. I'm, I'm very excited, excited to change my successfulness to successfulness and come out of this seminar being stuck, stuck less full. full. Yeah, get up, right, yeah, you guys. Get up and shout it. You got it, you got it. Very excited to change my successfulness to successfulness and come out of this seminar being stuck less full. Less full. All right, all right. Okay. You know, as hyper successful individuals, it's very common for us to get approached during business interviews or at trade shows or even just as we're strolling down the streets of Rio de Janeiro, a luxury city, the exact location of which is known only by the ultra elite. And when these fans come up to us, they always ask us the same question. What is your secret? What is the secret to success? Well, you might be surprised to learn that we didn't just have success handed to us on little silver spoons, on silver platters. From a young age, we faced countless challenges we had to overcome to get here. I mean, when we were growing up, even our own mother would say to us, you boys are never going to be internationally acclaimed, multilingual, motivational speaking superstars slash models. <laughs> she went as far as distracting us during trust fall exercises and replacing the mirrors in our house with funhouse mirrors so that our morning affirmations were warped into discouragement. It would have been easy for us to give up then and there to listen to those little voices in our head and to the loud, outspoken voices of all the people around us, telling us not to pursue our dreams, that we would never make it. In spite of this, or perhaps because of it, we persevered going on to win countless awards and accolades, including three speakeasies, four golden gloats, five walkies, seven talkies, and multiple nominations for best slide transitions. Now, after decades of coaching and creating some of the greatest people and companies and pets in the world, we felt the responsibility to make our knowledge accessible to everybody. That's why we're here to share with you Graham, Graham and Ashcon's 57, 57 Pillars of, of success. success, trademark. Thank you. Thank you. Before we do that, let's take a moment to get to know each other a little bit. I want everybody who's able to, to stand up. OK, excellent. Now I want everyone to turn to a person that you don't know, four to six rows in front of or behind you. <laughs> good, good. Now, we want you to introduce yourselves, but we're not just talking about normal pleasantries here, OK? We want you to look deep inside yourself and make a heartfelt introduction. In fact, we want the introduction to be so personal, we don't even want you to say anything. We want you to just concentrate on the person that you're looking at and really try to just silently communicate your very essence to them, on the count of three. One, two, three.
Wow. Powerful stuff, you guys. <laughs> Maybe for some of you, that'll be a connection that lasts a lifetime. You're all welcome to sit down, or if you're too full of inspiration, feel free to stay standing for the rest of the presentation. Now that we are all a family, let's get on to the pillars. There are 64 pillars in Graham and Ashcon's 57 Pillars of Success. <laughs> Trademark. That's 57 main pillars, plus seven bonus pillars included at no extra cost in all of our programs, books, audio seminars, and t-shirts. Every pillar is in turn broken into 23 sub-pillars, known architecturally as balusters, as those of you who are pillar savvy, I'm sure, will already know. And each baluster is in turn divided into 100 centipillars. You see, one of the things that makes Graham and Ashcon's 57 Pillars of Success trademark system so much more successful than other load-bearing based business philosophies is the robustness of the pillars. One should always be wary of too few pillars. I mean, sure, you could build a small studio apartment with six pillars, if that's all you're motivated to achieve. But who here among you would feel safe supporting even a single-story palatial mansion with just six pillars? I can see a lot of you out there shaking your heads, and you're right. That's obviously not enough pillars. Not for the type of success we know you all are capable of. All right, all right, enough preamble. Who here is ready to hear the 57 pillars? Let me hear you say yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Who here is ready to learn? Let's get some yes, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Who here is ready to succeed? Yeah. Who here is verbally authorizing us to withdraw $89.95 from your bank account as a result of attending this seminar? Let's get some yes, people. Let's hear it. Yeah. All Great. right. It. Let's it. do it. it. So we're going to start with pillar one, which is knowingness. Knowingness is fundamental to both knowledge and to knowing things. But how do you know how to cultivate your sense of knowingness. Let's break it down. There are 23 balusters that make up the pillar of knowingness. And let's start with baluster number one, advice. <clears throat> In the pursuit of success, advice can be a helping hand. But there is so much advice out there, and it's so common, there's so many people saying things, how do you know what to listen to? Luckily, after years of research, we've determined that all advice can be neatly categorized into two distinct groups, good and bad. And what you guys are looking here for is the good advice, just to clarify. And in order to be able to identify it, let's turn to our centipillars. The first of our hundred centipillars is credibility. It's extremely important to consider how credible the source is who's giving you advice. You're looking for expertise. And as a result, you want to find someone who's an expert in advice giving. You're mainly looking for people like best-selling authors, CEOs of successful companies, internationally acclaimed motivational speakers, life coaches, or anyone with guru in their name. These people basically have a PhD in being successful. And the more that they outwardly exude success, the more that you know that you can trust them. Famous people are simply incapable of giving bad advice. I mean, it's not like you can become successful simply by inheriting money and connections or, you know, because your social media content happened to correlate with the secret and complicated algorithm of a computer that puts you into a positive feedback loop of promotion and visibility. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Both of these are common examples of the myth of luck successfulness, which Unfortunately, does not exist. There are times in life where you'll be getting advice from someone who does not have the credentials of superstardom. And that's when you'll need to actually listen to what they're saying. And that's where our next center pillar comes in, actionability. Whenever you're listening to advice, there are some questions you're going to want to ask yourself to determine how actionable it is. Are, is the advice being presented concrete? Does it have direct goals that you can follow? Are the recommendations nonspecific? Is the, is the advice absent of these things? If the answer to these questions are yes, then you know that what you're looking at there is some solid grade A advice. You see, good advice usually consists entirely of grand intangible concepts like servitude and collaboration. The more specific and concrete the advice it is, the more actionable it is. And with action comes the potential for failure. On the other hand, abstract advice will never lead to failure because there's nothing to actually attempt to do. 
You go straight from listening to the advice to feeling accomplished. That's called living life in the fast lane. If you do find yourself getting advice that involves detailed instructions or numbered checklists, you can feel completely comfortable ignoring it. Later in Pillar 11, feigning interest, we'll go over on tips uh, on exactly how to make ignoring people in social situations more productive and enjoyable for everybody. The next center pillar we'd like to talk about is context. Good advice is universally good advice, regardless of the context. It doesn't matter if you run a little brick and mortar shop and you're getting advice from the CEO of a multinational conglomerate with hundreds of thousands of employees. That's right, if there's one thing we know about business, it's that every company is exactly the same. And what works for one person will work for everyone else. And that's why at our organization, Pillar Power Incorporated, we use all of the most highly recommended business strategies that are out there. For example, every week we put our full staff through hours of team building exercises to optimize morale and communication throughout the organization. And even though we only have a single employee, Jeremy, the results have been amazing. <laughs> In fact, the reports of interpersonal drama and conflict are the lower than they've ever been. We've also spent millions of dollars researching our target demographic, including online polls, focus groups, and one-on-one -on -one interviews. And now we can feel confident that we have been correctly directing all of our marketing efforts towards business people. So remember, does the person giving you advice offer a fundamentally different service or product than you do? Do they operate a business that's on an entirely different scale than yours? Are they in a different city or country with different cultural norms? It doesn't matter. Just ignore that little nagging voice in your head and implement whatever you hear, whether it makes sense for you or not. Context. It's universal. <laughs> All right. How's everybody feeling? Good. Who here has found some new insights just from these first three centipillars? Excellent. Looks like Excellent. everyone, yep. as usual. Uh, you there in the, uh, the blue shirt back there, I think I saw you raise your hand. What's your name? Steve? Great, got it. <laughs> Everyone say hi here to Steve. Hi, Steve. Steve, would you describe yourself as both impressed and inspired by what you've heard so far? Perhaps even motivated to get back to working on your own venture with a renewed vigor and excitement that you haven't felt in years? Gauging by the audience, I do not think you're alone. Let's all give Steve a big round of applause for being able to share that and for being vulnerable with us. Thank you, Steve. All right, moving on to our fourth center pillar, which is implementation. With really good advice, implementation doesn't matter at all. Even if you mess up or you don't put a lot of time into implementing your plans, the power of the initial advice and intention will ensure success. If not, it wasn't good advice. In fact, if you spend too much time implementing any single piece of advice you're given, you're losing valuable time that you could be spending implementing all sorts of other advice. You gotta remember, it's the quantity of advice that you take and implement that matters, not the quality. The quality of the results is predetermined, and I'll repeat this, predetermined by the quality of the idea. As a simple proof of this, just ask yourself this. Would I rather implement one thing in a day or 100? I can see a lot of you out there saying 100. And that's right. You know, our most successful students are amazed at how much they can accomplish when they just blindly follow as much advice as possible, rather than falling into the trap of doing any single piece of advice well. One tried and true strategy is to closely follow what's trendy and implement each new exciting idea as soon as you hear it. Next time you're listening to a podcast or reading a business book and you hear a good idea, see what you can do to implement it right then and there. Let me repeat this because it's important. Implement it right then and there. Cancel your meetings. Push aside whatever tasks you are supposed to be working on. In Pillar 40, accountability. We'll go more into the importance of not holding yourself accountable to anything you've said in the past. Just remember, if you want to be a great human being, you need to first start by being a great human doing. Our next center pillar is delegation. 
Delegation is an important part of every leader's job, and that's why it's critical to delegate quickly and efficiently, ideally with as little guidance, planning, detail, or justification given to your employees at all. As a business owner, your main responsibility is to listen to as much advice as you can and to come up with exciting new ideas for your business. It's the responsibility of your employees to actually implement these ideas exactly as you're planning them in their head, your head, ideally with no direct communication. Just yesterday, we told our employee, Jeremy, to uh, secure international trademarks for future countries we're likely to be popular in, to put together a feasibility report for this business idea I had in my dream the other night about edible furniture, <laughs> to do our daily 45 minutes of yoga for us, and to submit our 30-page application to be considered for the powerful Pointers Hall of Fame. Jeremy understands the secrets of pillar-based implementation that you're all starting to learn today. And he was able to accomplish all of this before lunchtime with a smile on his face. We didn't actually check in with him, of course. I mean, if you start checking in on all the ideas you've given to all your employees, you'll have no time left for the real work of making more. Follow-up is for followers, not leaders. <laughs> Good ideas combined with delegation will almost magically manifest themselves into reality with absolutely no effort on your part at all, every single time. <laughs> the next center pillar of the advice baluster is predictability. Always remember that you live in a world that is totally and entirely under your control. As the saying goes, the best laid plans always go off without a hitch. We know what you're thinking. Graham and Ashcon, my life experience has led me to believe that I live in a vast and complex world with almost infinite amount of variability and interdependency and that my life inevitably moved and swayed by the ever-changing tide of society which is itself but a small blip in the giant and vast ununderstandable universe. Well, you're wrong. If you can't predict everything that's going to happen to you in the future, it's just because you're not trying hard enough. Luck and randomness and unexpected circumstances beyond your control are just myths. Let's do a little exercise. Everybody think back on the last two years of your lives. Can you think of anything that had even a minor impact on the way that you were living your life or running your business? <laughs> of course not. That's nonsense. So just remember, if you take some advice and it doesn't succeed, there's no possible way it was because of the random and uncontrollable world around you. A good idea is a good idea. You just messed it up. <laughs> Our next center pillar is perhaps the most valuable piece of knowledge in all of Graham and Ashcon's 57 Pillars of Success trademark. This one piece of advice alone is likely to make you millions simply within the next year. It really is remarkable how simple it is. Gentlemen, I'm sorry to inform you that you have run out of time. You need to bring your talk to its conclusion. But we, we're just, Well, I'm sorry, folks. It looks like we ran out of time. <laughs> we know what you're thinking right now, too. The value of just these first six center pillars of the first baluster of the first pillar of Graham and Ashcon's 57 Pillars of Success trademark has already changed my life. And trust us, the best is yet to come. And we want to make sure you can benefit from all of it. And that's why today, as a special deal for all of you, don't tell anybody else about this. We're going to let you purchase the rest of the 57 pillars in the form of a 184 DVD interactive course for the incredible promotional price of just $27,000 per pillar. That's over $600 million in savings from our normal retail price. And if you order today, we will throw in a 10 DVD mystery course completely free of charge. To purchase, just go over to Graham and Ashcon's 57 Pillars of Success trademark, and you'll be instantly taken to a payment screen. Or you can just hold your credit card up right now, and Jeremy will come around and help you sign our friendly 936 page contractual payment terms. We'd like to thank you all for experiencing the pillars with us, and trust us, the thanks is mutual. Before we go, though, can we see a show of hands? Or if you're simply too excited, which I know how it goes, just feel free to jump up out of your chair. How many of you are feeling stuck less full now, huh? All right. All right, everyone. Perfect.
Perfect. We'd love to stick around, but unfortunately, we have to hop on our private helic apartments and fly off to another event in Portugal. Don't worry, for anyone who did want to hang out with us afterwards, we've recorded some DVDs, some CDs of Small Talk, which are available for purchase at our booths. Thank you, everybody, and you have a good night. <laughs>